uh, because uh, I would imagine that uh, if the employers were adhering to the labor laws and uh, making sure they extend the benefits, the necessary benefits to these ladies, it will go a long way in uplifting their uh, living standards. As African economies grow, attitudes towards parental leave have been changing. A number of countries now offer more maternity leave than before, and many offer paternity leave as well. Njiao says she thinks Kenyan women are better off now than they were a generation ago. And with more and more discussion around the issue, there are hopes Africa's labor laws will eventually benefit everyone. Hilary Hewler for VOA News, Nairobi. Well, until October 2014, the U.S. Central Bank helped to stabilize the American economy through a massive bond buying plan. Uh, through this monetary stimulus plan, billions of dollars were also injected into emerging economies. Some of that money is now coming back. As 2014 comes to a close, Mila Sega takes a look at what that means for the global economy. Since 2008, the U.S. Central Bank has pumped nearly $4 trillion into the global economy. Besides boosting liquidity, quantitative easing has also lowered U.S. interest rates to record lows. But instead of causing a spike in inflation, as many had feared, some of the money began flowing into countries where yields were higher. Catherine Mann is chief economist at the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Emerging markets have been the beneficiaries of uh, investors' search for yield. Among the beneficiaries, the BRIC countries, Brazil, Russia, India, and China. But now, with U.S. interest rates set to rise next year, Brad McMillan at Commonwealth Financial Network says some of that money will start flowing back to the United States. He spoke to us on Skype. Because with U.S. rates starting to rise, the attractiveness of the U.S. as an investment destination continues to increase. You're going to see a lot of capital that went to the emerging markets potentially come back. That's not necessarily a bad thing, says the OECD's Catherine Mann. Part of the reason why that's the case is, is that tapering has happened along with a speed up in the U.S. economy. So the emerging markets, even as capital was being reallocated, ended up doing better from the standpoint of exporting. That's because a stronger dollar makes foreign exports cheaper. On the other hand, it's also likely to produce increased volatility, the ups and downs in financial markets. Mohamed El Arian is chief economic advisor at financial services firm Alliance. Why has volatility returned to the foreign exchange market? Because we're going from a world of multi-speed central banking to multi-track central bank. In the old days, everybody was doing the same thing, just different magnitudes. Now, we have two central banks that are lifting their foot off the accelerator, the Bank of England and the Fed, and we have two other central banks that are putting their foot more on the accelerator, the ECB and the Bank of Japan. Experts say price volatility is an integral part of economic normalization. International finance consultant James Berkeley says it may prove a turning point for the global economy. He spoke with us on Skype. Think, uh, governments really should be focused on trying to maximize international trade and um, to you know, really take advantage of this period of, of beyond recovery. We're now into a period I would describe uh, of serious sustained growth. 